Hi, Mo. As I'm hearing the music for the first time, really fascinating. It is pretty amazing. <laughs> it's, yeah. like an, it's like you're standing waiting for an elevator to arrive. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's what really music random. would you like to... What music would you like to hear? No, I think that music feels quite appropriate because you're almost waiting for a bit of a curtain reveal, right? Waiting for something to start happening. So I think it's appropriate. It's just a bit of a new experience hearing it, I guess. Yeah. I'm just preparing some, um, opening some stuff here in case um, you ask me to talk about the... Uh, Ah, there you are. <laughs> yeah, listening on my own space because you know Pavanek's trick. If uh, if you're on a space, then other people like if if someone you follow is on a space, uh, that space shows up in their list at the top of Twitter. Oh right. <laughs> so that invites more people to kind of jump in. Yeah. Nice. Hey Andrew. Hey Andrew, thanks for joining in. You know, I did, um, I did post this on the new uh, Nostr profile and I asked something about, I said that, you know, we'll have this Twitter space here today. And I asked, well, when's, when's Nostr spaces? And I guess someone's already working on it. Nice. nice. So maybe should maybe we, that did, is in our future. Did we just share, should we maybe share in the community that we're just live on Jitsi now or maybe in the general channel? Um, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Do you want to share that? Let's see. Um, let me grab the link. Cool. I'll do that now. Yep, done. That link doesn't seem to be. Yep. Small group, I'm just inviting everyone to speak. If you'd like to chat. Good time. Hey, Daniel. Did you have a busy demo? Yeah, I was pretty much um, <clears throat> working with uh, the UX research toolkit the entire day, taking all the feedback from yourself, um, from the from the survey, and just making all of those iterations. You know, paying attention to the sizes of the buttons. That was the feedback from you. Um, adding the back button at the bottom of the scroll. Um, a lot of things didn't make sense to the users that made sense to me who was designing it. And that was really interesting to uh, to get that feedback on. So um, I'll probably spend the rest of tomorrow working on that and also uh, the presentation for FOSDEM. So, yeah. Yeah, sorry. I still need to give you some feedback on that. So that will also be part of the newsletter update later. But uh, Mo is speaking at FOSTEM this weekend, Sunday at 15, at 3 p.m. UTC, 1500 UTC. Yep. Talking about the UX research kit. And FOSTEM is a open source um, ground up conference that happens in Brussels. The last couple of years were uh, online on only and the community presented there as well. And this year it's most turn and actually in person. Yeah, not I just remote. Literally just before this call, um, I received an email from the international train service that there might be some delays in the train. So um, I might have to replan how I go there because, um, yeah, they might have be some delays due to some train works. Um, otherwise, it's just four hours to Brussels from, uh, from Amsterdam. So it's pretty quick. Yeah, and Fostum has a whole design track. 
uh, or op open source, open design track. It's at fosdem.org. Uh, and they also stream everything online. So tap, turn into that one. Um, yeah, how about we how about we just get started with the newsletter then? Got a good group here. Hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We uh we sent out so part of Mo and I's work uh today was also to wrap up the newsletter. Um this one is number 39, goes out every three weeks. It's at bitcoindesign.substack.com, also linked at the top here. And um it summarizes the last few weeks, everything, uh, all the all the chatter that's been happening in the community and around it. Uh, different projects people are working on, calls, a few upcoming things, and all of that. And here we would just like to to go through them a little bit. For some, this is the first newsletter where I think the word uh, Noster was mentioned, let me see, six times in total. And um, I don't think it's been mentioned in any previous newsletters, but I feel like we're going to see this word pop up more frequently uh, the way things are going. It seems to fascinate everyone. And uh, also, we, we do have a Nostra profile here for the design community that um, uh, it's just at bitcoin.design. You can find uh, find this account in your Nostra client. I still think there's a small technical glitch with how this is set up that I'm looking into where it's not visible in all accounts. But just look at the Bitcoin design profile. Um, one of the replies, there's also the, the, the pub key directly. Um, but let's hop, let's uh, hop right in. Um, in the newsletter, uh, the one of the top things is the wallet scrutiny project, and um, so this one's interesting. Uh, so wallet scrutiny is a security review website for Bitcoin wallets. Uh, you know, identifying all kinds of potential issues that um, making sure that the source code that's actually provided is actually the same code that in the end runs on your device, and that nothing happened in between. Um, pointing out potential security issues and very, various other little things that you actually don't really think about that much uh, during, during normally, but that are pretty important. And uh, so we're redesigning the wallet page, uh, lots of information architecture there, also uh, affecting some of the methodology about how some reviews are done. And an expert opinions feature based on Noster, as that first mentioned. Um, and uh, also we're, we're starting to get uh, into homepage design, most on usability testing. So if you're interested, uh, I think we have three hours of calls linked in the newsletter. That will catch you up. And if you're interested in helping with the homepage design, a little bit of branding, a little bit of copywriting, a bit of information design, uh, that will be coming up. And um, also, if you'd like to help with implement some of those designs that are just about to wrap up, then you're also more than, more than welcome to, to join that project. Uh, next one is about UX research and mode. That is your specialty. Would you like to take that one on? I have everything open here in front of me. I'm literally sitting in front of my computer. <laughs> um, is this the, the, um, oh, the UX research group? So the user journey mapping one, and I'm guessing the presentation. Um, yeah, so. Um, We've had some some UX research calls, and I'm super grateful because um, you know there's been some other UX researchers who've been really kind with uh, with um, investing their time and um, their energy. So I'd like to give a shout out to Art and Jan as well as Jakob because they've been helping and jumping on the calls and helping me to rethink everything. And um, Art um, actually led a um, we he designed a survey for the uh, UX research toolkit. And he did a really good job designing that, just a, a Google survey. Um, I had a look through it. And the goal of the Google survey was to get an idea of how people experience the current version, I call it version one of the UX research toolkit. So the, one of the initial questions we asked them was, um, you know, what is your current understanding of UX research? And once they finished going through the kit, we asked them, now what is your current understanding of UX research? And most of the replies, thank God, were, you know, there was an increase in knowledge of understanding what UX research was. And um, a lot of good uh, feedback was given. Um, you know, uh, I'm really grateful because a lot of people retweeted it and shared the tweet. We got back 17 responses. Um, we all put a lot of work. We were DMing people, asking people directly for for survey responses. And the, the feedback came back, uh, yeah, very well. So 
now making iterations to the kit based on the feedback and going to continue designing the UX Research Toolkit. And then um, once the second half of it is finished, we're going to do usability tests on it. So there's a lot of fun stuff going on in there. <laughs> yeah, I, I call it fun. So, yeah. Yeah, I have to say, I don't think we've had this much activity around the UX research in the community in the in, uh, ever maybe. I think you're really you're really starting to you know, gather some good group of people and a lot of activity there. So it's really awesome. Um, okay, moving on. Okay, Faustin, we already mentioned this one. Then uh, Nostra profile, we mentioned it. Uh, next one is Daniel, who's listening in here. Uh, wrote a nice piece on building a Bitcoin wallet with Swift. If you're on the technical side, if you'd like to get LDK, BDK, the, the Lightning and Bitcoin development kit set up and, and start tinkering with a Bitcoin wallet for iOS, definitely check this one out. He's also happy for feedback and uh, contributions and all of that. Tons of screenshots in here, tons of step-by-step uh, -step, um, uh, tips on how to set everything up. Check it out and help him out. Um, I think this is one of the keys where some of these development libraries are still fairly low level in a way that uh, there are many different pieces. They're more like libraries. There are a lot of little pieces to them. And there's still a lot of foundational setup work that has to be done in order to actually then start building the user interface and the, and the, the, the fun stuff for, for people like me. Um, and so the BDG is a nice uh, intermediate part of that that provides that foundation. So check it out. Uh, next one, the, how do you even say that? Is it Beck or Batch 32 m your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> okay, so that one is still going well. That is for promoting the adoption. Uh, when taproot.org is, is the website. Uh, I feel, you know, I think there's progress being made. Um, if I look at the Slack channel here, uh, Bitfinex apparently says in three to four weeks, they will have taproot support. So things are kind of moving along. And uh, then Gold did a few updates to improve SEO of the website. So not a ton of hap happening, actively working on this campaign, but it seems like you know the wheels are spinning, things are moving forward. So that's pretty nice to see, which um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit to something further down in the Seeking Feedback section. So Doc Sharp, is, has put together a list of campaign websites that promote adoption of different types of Bitcoin tech, like the um, unified QR codes, um, BIP 324, BIP 119, Stratum V2, and also asked if there were other ones. And um, signingdevice.com has come up, lightningaddress.com is up. Uh, there might be a website for page joins at some point. Uh, I suggest bold12.org, someone's being worked on. So these are things where um, Bitcoin is evolving and moving forward, but when some tech matures, um, it still needs to be implemented and adopted. And sometimes it's not, you know, there, there's oftentimes there's kind of a chicken and egg problem. No one wants to implement it until uh, other applications actually support it. And uh, so to push these things forward, these campaign sites pop up that explain in like very basic terms of how this new technology works, what it does, uh, and also how to, um, how to implement it potentially. And then also lists ways of how you can help with implementation. And sometimes also which services, applications, wallets, exchanges, whatnot, actually support it already and which ones don't. And then if, you don't, if they don't, you, know, you can reach out to them and try to make it happen. So uh, those are kind of those these kind of temporary uh, campaign sites while while things are being adopted, and I think they're pretty they're pretty important. I would say. Um, so yeah, I think I feel like we have we have a few more here that we need to build for certain things. I also mentioned uh, ones that I would like to see is around support of multi language recovery phrases and accessibility, um, because those don't, they just don't really get um, a lot of attention. Um, 
let's see. Mo, you already mentioned the survey. Oh yeah, just uh, scheduled a um, call with the Simple Crypto team. That is simple-crypto.app, which crypto in the name, but it's all about Bitcoin. And that is a app that uh, onboards people to Bitcoin. I know the uh, founders, they, they're locals here where I live, and they're just turning this into a full-time job. And we scheduled a call with them to review the UX of their uh, application. So that's February 13. So tune into that one. Um, hopping on, Bitcoin Design Guide, Milestone 18. People are moving on same tasks as we've had last couple of weeks. And um, those tasks have gone from kind of early gathering content and are now more in the, in the phases where either like final implementation or discussing final details before, you know, something can be implemented and pushed live. So um, kind of a quiet progress happening there. Um, next one is about tipping sets. So as I mentioned, everyone's fascinated with the uh, Noster right now. And um, the, so Damus and a few other applications that implemented uh, lightning tips, which work very smoothly in there. And because we can build our own uh, clients so easily now with Noster, it's just super easy to build this functionality in. Uh, but people are trying, are struggling a little bit to figure out how the right interaction model. Uh, for example, if there's a like button on the post, you press it, you get a little bit of animation, you're done. But when you want to tip someone Satoshi, then uh, there are a couple things that are a little bit tricky. First, the communication with, uh, with the uh, wallet to get an invoice. There's some time involved that so it doesn't feel instant necessarily. And then there's the question of how much to tip. You want to have a fixed amount per click. You want to tap and hold in order to change amounts. But then you know it's it's very hard to get a pretty precise value in there. So um, yeah, and since this has come up a few times, I guess the question was should be should this be in added to the design guide? It's, so not sure on that one. It's an interesting one because just recently, um, I think in the Get Albi channel, Jakob ran a similar um, usability test because he came up with three different um, design ideas for tipping on social media. Um, well, tipping actually tipping on um, YouTube videos to be more specific using um, using Albi and he came up with three design iterations to um, yeah to A-B test it so it is something that seems to be coming up so yeah yeah I think um, this this is will probably become a lot more popular in the future but now we have these strongholds or kind of the, these na natural use cases around podcasting and value to value where it feels pretty natural so you can stream sats while you listen and i just talked to someone i know here and they mentioned they heard something about they're totally nothing to do with bitcoin but um they said um uh that they heard about it on a po another podcast a tech podcast and it makes total sense to them but um it seems like general the, these kind of generic social media tipping just doesn't quite click yet with people. But, uh, you know, if we can find good, if we can, what, one of the things that I think is important with the guide is that when we see a, a, a Bitcoin related problem discussed over and over and people looking for design solutions that we simply observe that and then we kind of port that back into the guide as kind of best practices. Uh, in, so others, people who, cut, who try to tackle this in the future again, they don't have to reinvent the wheel again but they have a good resource uh, to just you know, pick it up and, and do it the way that everyone else already figured out how to do it. Hey, Steven. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Um, just chatting here. Uh, I just hopped forward a little bit. Um, we're in the, in the design guide section. Oh yeah, this is, uh, so that, like I mentioned earlier, Steven, uh, Nostra appears six times in his, uh, in this um, newsletter. And here is, I think the second or third time here. So um, Nostra accounts can also be generated from recovery phrases, the 12 word seeds. Uh, so technically some of the, some of the backup uh, UX that we came up with 
around Bitcoin should also very much apply uh, to Nostr applications. And if you look at Nostr applications, like when I set up the community ca- account, the onboarding is basically non-existent. It says like, you click generate account. It says, here's your private key and you have maybe a copy button and that's it. Um, so it feels like, uh, as I talked about reinventing the wheel, we don't need to do that here. We have a whole, we have many pages in the design guide that just deal with uh, how to back up uh, recovery phrases and private keys that should um, should be, be, be portable uh, very well. So maybe we need to, to point people towards that. Uh, a little yeah, bit. that's cool. I didn't know about MIP6, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know it it makes for a very very um very natural um very natural overlap. So for example, if your your Lightning wallet or your Bitcoin wallet already has a recovery phrase, it can just current generate an Oster account or profile from that and use that for communication. It doesn't like it doesn't need to do anything new really. There's no second account to manage or anything else. Um, so just just very interesting. Um, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what the what all this experimentation that's happening right now, what that leads to. Um, next one was, uh, oh yeah, we have uh, on Bitcoin.design, we have slash newsletter and slash social media now um, for to point out the those those channels a little bit further and the social media accounts page that needs to be updated with Noster as well. Everything's Noster. Um, Okay, cool. I keep talking here, Mo. I'm trying to find things uh, or that I can hand over to you, but uh, a lot of this stuff is related to things that I'm working on. No, and, and first <laughs> off, if you ask me about Noster, I, I, I'm not going to be able to say anything on that subject. <laughs> yeah. no, it's really just because of wallet scrutiny. Uh, Leo keep talking about it, and uh, the expert opinions feature was like, oh, we're going to use Noster, we're going to Noster. And you know, I was trying to figure out how to design this form for people to post a comment. And then I basically thought, thought like, I need to figure out what this means and how this works. And that's basically led me down that rabbit hole. I'm sure you'll be, you'll be pulled into it uh, very soon as well. Seems to be a, a black hole that just opened there uh, fairly recently. But um, okay, so next one is about saving Satoshi. So, uh, so we have these, if you're into image generation, this is a really fun one. Uh, the Saving Satoshi is a interactive learning experience where you learn like, some of the basic Bitcoin technology about hashing, private key generation, elliptic curves, mining, all these things. But it's told through a story, a narrative uh, that also transmits a lot of the Bitcoin culture. And we're trying to create a really playful experience and we're trying to use the image generation tools like Midjourney and and Stable Diffusion and, and Dali and all that to illustrate the story. Uh, so lots of interesting stuff coming together. And right now we have these weekly image generation sessions where we take, uh, so we have 10 chapters so far spec'd out for the story uh, with different types of lesson content. And so we pick one chapter and we try to generate images that that visualize this part of the story. So in chapter one, uh, you know, kind of the, the big problem of this story uh, that the Bitcoin network's coming to a halt, this kind of uh, came up and that we figured a kind of a way to illustrate that. And now this second part, our protagonist is going on to an adventure. They got a secret message, message from probably Satoshi. Uh, and now they're uh, on their journey and they're you know, like sneaking around an abandoned warehouse. And so we're trying to figure out how to, uh, how to illustrate that. So it's a really fun activity. And uh, so I'm kind of surprised too that some of this image generation stuff, initially it takes a good amount of time to figure out the tools a little bit, but once you do, it's it's actually not too too crazy. So feel free to join there. If you like this type of activity. Um, Have you tried yeah. scenario.gg yet? No, I haven't. Have you? My- uh, so I think the web address is scenario.gg and it's, uh, uh, it's like a invite. It's like a beta thing. So you have to like sign up for a list and every once in a while they let more people into it, but it's, uh, it's specifically designed for like 
2D game assets. I mean, I think it's applicable for more than just games if you use your creativity, but it's the idea, like, imagine you have, like, a, a video game and there's, like, potions and collectibles and other things that you can get in the game. So it's, like, once you have defined the art style, you could, like, define an art style for your game. Like, okay, this is the painting style that I want to use for, you know, all the art in my game. You train the AI on, like, the style, and then you know, you could just like bang out variations of different assets and be like, okay, give me a hundred different potions that the player can get, or like a hundred different badges that the player can earn or a hundred different variations of the same, you know, character or whatever, same animal or monster or whatever it is. I don't know. It's, it's like a different take on the AI art generator. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm looking at it right now. That makes total sense. You know, I'm wondering. We wondering if we might we might have some room for this. Uh, we might have a bit of a need for this. Awesome. So many good tools. Yeah, you know the some of the really interesting stuff that I came across that was, I guess, I could have expected, but it's simply that when you generate these tools, the AI will give you all kinds of stuff that makes you think. In, in, in for saving Satoshi, is this, is this the world that we imagine this um, this story to play in? Or there was a very simple one where um, Gerald generated some images that, that looked super cool, but in all those images, the people had big numbers on their outfits, and that makes you think of like a sci-fi future where everyone's a number, and you know the individual doesn't matter anymore. That makes you think like, okay, is, is that the type of future that we want? Uh, or other things like how futuristic do we want this future to be? Do we want uh, the buildings in there to be kind of more Im buildings we imagine today and then have flying cars, uh, you know, floating around to kind of hint at the that technology has progressed or so? Um, it's just very interesting to this back and forth between image generation and um, and kind of your your uh, I guess how how it then what it reflects back to you and then how 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 that affects your your perception and, and the decisions that you make in then, you know, in that continue continuous back and forth. Um, just thinking out loud, if someone told me a year ago, you know, um, hey, we're having an AI creative session and we're going to generate art, I would be, my first question would be, what are you talking about? You know, I mean, and now it's something that's so normal. People are, the team at Saving Satoshi are jamming together and creating art using AI, it's just, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it, it is wild. And it's it really only has been half a year or something like that. It's it's totally nuts. A big unlock. Uh, awesome. So let's move on in the in the newsletter. So this one is once again, the question has come up. What is the better word? Hardware wallet, hardware signer, signing device, or signing key? Um, and it does seem like people prefer the term signing device that gets 60% of the votes. It was asked by a Bitcoin keeper, the account. But maybe we don't need to get into that topic. That always seems to be a pretty heated one. Um, Cool, let's hop into the everything else section here because some of the other stuff we'd already mentioned. So uh, if you're looking for a open source wallet that teaches you about Bitcoin and is on testnet so you can play around with um, with Bitcoin, check out Padawan Wallet and they just released uh, a new version that includes two years worth of work of summer of Bitcoin students. Um, and it looks really good. I'm really proud of what the, what the students did there last summer. Uh, Stephen, did you already uh, did you already try it out? Uh, no, I haven't tried it out because I got to pull out my like uh, test Android phone and and uh, yeah, so I got to do that. I think it's like at home right now. I got to figure out, but yeah, I will test it out. I'm on Google Play now, and I'm just you know, it's such a it's so nice the color scheme that they chose. They couldn't have you know. These are such nice complementary colors. It just makes you feel happy and in, it's so inviting, the, the, the color scheme they chose. That's just the initial first impression. Man, I really, uh, I really, uh, I really stepped in it with uh, this one. Now I feel like, a, I feel like a dick. I feel like a, 
a bad a bad summer of Bitcoin mentor. I haven't even downloaded the app on my phone yet. Jesus Christ, Stephen. <laughs> All good. All good. You've seen you've you watched those designs happen and come together for months. Um, but you know, interestingly, uh, twenty five minutes ago, Addy sent uh, sent me another email. And he says, we're back with Summer of Bitcoin 2023. And they want to have another um, design track. So it's on. Pretty cool. Ooh, so if I've you got are... ideas. Sorry? I've got ideas. Excellent. Yeah. Um, he probably, yeah, I asked, I asked him a couple of days about it because someone else asked about it in the Slack channel. So very cool that this is happening again. Last year was the first design track they had. Now we're back at it, so that's a great sign. And this uh, summer of Bitcoin is specifically for um, university students. I don't think it's exclusive. Uh, I think in the design team was also a high school student last year. Um, but generally, students are kind of the target audience to introduce them to Bitcoin and open source development and design. It's a really good project um, can, uh, program, summer program. So, and uh, seems like application period. It's already open and it goes until March. And then May to August will be the project period. Awesome. It's, we'll have to chat about that more in the community. It's so nice. I'm just I'm still on Google Play looking at Padawan Wallet. And it's so nice to see the the designs that you know that ideas or UX ideas that they had from last year now coming through in the in the interface. Um, you know, the developers obviously still using all of the ideas that the students worked on and this wallet was last updated on the 20th of January, 2023. So just, just a couple of days ago, he's updated it already. So there's some good work. There's some nice follow-up stuff being done with the work from, um, um, what do you call it, Summer of Bitcoin. Yeah, and I think there's kind of, um, this is, there, there's a lesson in there a little bit uh, from my own open source experience is that Sometimes it takes half a year or a year or so until something gets implemented and you're like, oh, it's not going to happen. You forgot about it. You're kind of disappointed or so. But things sometimes just take take their time. And that has to do with that a lot of work is being done voluntarily. Um, sometimes also because they're just higher priorities. Let's say some urgent security issue comes up that needs to be prioritized. But um, it's very cool then when, when this type of works comes through and for I'm sure it's super encouraging uh, for the summer of Bitcoin students to see this live. I think I saw Precious and um, I think I saw him tweet about it, uh, being pretty excited to see this go live. So it's awesome. But yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, yeah, sometimes it takes patience in open source until things go live. Oh, hey, Stephen, the next one might be next one in the in the newsletter might be something for you. So uh, there's a talk coming up that is organized by Draper X, which is a uh, Bitcoin accelerator studio. And uh, they're organizing a call for the whole community. Anyone interested about the future of commerce on the lightning network with voltage February 7? Stephen, do you maybe know something about that? Uh, I don't know a whole lot about it. I think uh, I think Nate is uh, the one hosting that call. He's a uh, is our support engineer, uh, so he's uh, kind of like a, a whiz at um, running lightning nodes and you know just kind of helping out clients and stuff with their uh, you know channel channel issues and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't been uh, paying attention to specifically what that one's going to be about, but it should be pretty cool, I'm sure. Yep, I signed, I signed up. I'll tune in. Awesome. Uh, next one is about advancing Bitcoin conference. It's, you know, I was not aware of this. It seems like they also have a conference edition, an enterprise edition, September 14th, 15th. Sorry? I did not know about this one. I thought, I thought this was supposed to be in the UK. Yeah, so March 2 to 3 is the one in London. And then it seems like uh, September 14 to 15, so there's one in Malaga, Spain. And it is, this is um, a bit, it's the Enterprise Edition. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like, of course it's the Enterprise Edition. You go to the website and they got that, you know, 
black weight typeface at like, you know, 200, 200 points, just taking up the entire screen. That's enterprise. Oh yeah. It's not, it's not the open source edition, but I mean, I would go to Malaga, Spain, beautiful city. That does seem, think, look very appealing. I mean, you go to a conference and then go to Spain as well. Yeah, it's, it's a bit hard to say no to that one. That's quite cool. I wonder if this is the first enterprise edition. I've never, I've never heard about it before. Um, I'm curious what the difference is between like the, that and the regular uh, adopting Bitcoin. Why attend? So you work for a company that has or is considering Bitcoin or blockchain technology and a strategy. Uh, that kind of sucks. We're like conference here about best practices. Okay, that's neat. Bitcoin is no issue. So it, it almost looks like, you know, like advancing Bitcoin. Like it, it, it always came across to me like it's a very developer focused conference. Like there's a, you know, a lot of incredibly technical talks um, at the, the previous couple ones. This one almost looks like it's more like, like for companies and like, you know, you, uh, you, you bring, uh, you know, you send your employee there or something. It's kind of like to investigate, like, well, why should we, you know, integrate Bitcoin into our products and solutions and workflow? Yeah, makes total sense. By the way, uh, I'll speak, John's and I will speak at Advancing Bitcoin in London. And it will not be super technical. It's going to be about uh, design developer collaboration and the Bitcoin UI kit. But yeah, otherwise it's very it's very it's very practical and very developer focused. Uh, advancing Bitcoin. Very nice. Um, okay, next one: <laughs> ordinals and inscriptions, uh, which uh, that seems like it's it's turned into quite the stir on Twitter at least. So the the idea now that. Um, so I've been aware of this ordinal thing for a long time, and I thought it was kind of like an interesting art project in a way that you know you can kind of trace satoshis that you can number them based on a specific way, and uh, and then that you know some of them that have I don't know a certain number or so uh, that they somehow are more valuable than others. Um, I oh, I would try to look through the website, try to make sense of it, but I never quite I quite never really could dig through it. So I thought oh, that's kind of nice, and then all of a sudden. Um, this um, digital artifact inscriptions thing popped up last week. And now people are embedding JPEGs, PNGs, and other stuff in Bitcoin transactions, apparently. Um, and, you know, people are not happy. Some people are not happy about it. I know some people who are, who even do not like the op returns and embedding messages in, in the blockchain because uh, they see it as a, a wasteful use of of this precious block space. Um, other people are like, hey, this is so exciting. We can do more things here now on Bitcoin. So it's very interesting. The, the practical matter of fact is that it is possible. Um, censoring, or I don't think you can put it back in the box because that, you know, how do you even get that consensus? Who is to say what's good use of block space, what isn't, if it doesn't, you know, cause a, if it's not a security issue or so, maybe that's just how it is from now on. Uh, it's another interesting thing that just popped up recently and um, will be interesting to to see now with, with this. I mean, it's a very narrow technique, but wh what people will make out of it, right? It's, not, it's a bit like Twitter, right? You only have 140 characters, but people used it for this very, very complex, you know, intricate, communications maybe something interesting will come out of these i don't know what, what do you think about ordinals inscriptions and all that it's interesting you know i've been following it for a little while too uh uh it's like you know it's funny because it's been developed out in the open i mean casey's been you know promoting this for a a good bit and it, it's like it, it's just kind of like then he put it on on you know it was on signet for a little bit there then it launches it on mainnet and suddenly everybody, you know, becomes aware of it. <laughs> it was, it was putting on mainnet, which, you know, turned it into this like uh, overnight drama. Um, but you're right. It's like, it, it does follow the rules of the protocol. Um, I, I, I don't really, uh, I don't personally buy into a lot of arguments that like, 
you know, like we have been having these arguments about spam and Bitcoin since like 2010 or, you know, so like, I mean, people would try and like build games on the blockchain and, you know, put additional data in and stuff. And it's like, you know, you do increase the size of your transaction. You do pay a higher fee. So if somebody wants to pay a higher fee for that, um, then, then that's their money to spend. Um, I, I think part of the controversy comes from this idea that now in a post segwit world and in a post taproot world, there, there's some kind of, I guess, a discount. Um, it, it doesn't always correspond to the amount of space they're taking up and the amount they're paying. So I'm not, I need to educate myself a little bit more on that kind of issue before I, you know, form a full opinion of it. It's, it's kind of my, my, my whole thing with NFTs is just like, I don't, it, it's fun. It's cute. It's interesting, but it's like, I don't, I don't really think, uh, you know, NFTs are the, the groundbreaking, you know, wor world changing thing that, that a lot of people think they are. Um, so I, you know, it's like, I, wasn't you know wild about nfts on other blockchains i'm not necessarily wild about them on bitcoin but having said that it's absolutely fascinating the way that the whole ordinals mechanism is just fascinating i want to learn more about that um just because it's so clever you know uh, so i don't know it'll be interesting to see where it goes yeah this might be, this might be a good topic for another um learning bitcoin and design call to, to yeah. go through that mechanism. You're right. Totally it, agree. Would be, it would be. Yeah, we're going to do a session on it here at Atlanta Bit Devs too um, in March. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, it's kind of it's also a block fee thing. I'm sorry, I'm rambling about this, but like the it's it's another interesting thing too because you know the one conversation that always comes up about uh, you know Bitcoin inevitably in social gatherings is like uh, uh, you know what happens when the block reward runs out, and that's just like one of those black hole conversations, black hole topics, the conversation can never recover from. And, uh, you know, a lot of times it always comes back to, uh, uh, you know, increasing transaction fees after the block reward runs out and, you know, will lightning network channel opens be enough to, um, you know, uh, maintain, uh, enough, uh, fees for miners to keep running. Well, you know, you, one of the things you hear about the, from the ordinal community is that uh, it's like, well, if people are just, you know, uh, putting inscriptions all over Bitcoin and stuff and sending them to each other. That's that's transaction fee incentive. So I don't know. I'll shut up. You know, and, and also just thinking that's the idea of things being decentralized because, you know, it's open to anyone and everyone to build on it. So it's open to the creative minds of, of everyone to uh, to decide what they would like to build on it. So. It's uh, it's interesting what's uh, what's coming to life as a result of that. Yep, <laughs> very, very interesting. Um, okay, and, and another playful thing is um, there's a there's a website called Satlantis, uh, Satlantis.net, which is a a custom Minecraft server where uh, they built in a bunch of Bitcoin related things. So there's, there's like a huge space in there where you know, a huge lobby where there's like huge Bitcoin symbols and different architecture. And it's sponsored by the Bitcoin company. So you can, um, you can buy like, gift cards and other stuff in there. And uh, they also have uh, in the game, you have a Bitcoin wallet as a Minecraft player and you can, you can receive and send sats so uh, one of the first things I did was I, I, I got in there with my son last Saturday or so. It, I think it was was, uh, was announced the day before that or so. I happened to see it. And uh, I wanted to teleport myself to him because we spawn in different sides of the world. So I sent 5,000 sats into Minecraft. And it was super smooth. I just got an URL link, paid for it. And then you know, two seconds later, I had the sats in Minecraft in my account. And then I could use that in the game to pay for my teleportation. Um, and then another interesting mechanism there is that uh, when you join the game, you get an ASIC and you can set up that ASIC. So you can claim land and you can set up your ASIC and then you need to put in gems into that ASIC so it runs. And then per ASIC, you get hash rate. And then uh, they, they, they have these 150,000 sats or so per day rewards that they 
uh, part of it they distribute every 10 minutes or something. And then, you know, if your ASIC's running, you have a chance to actually earn Satoshis. And then you get they get in your wallet and then you can take them out of the game again. Um, so it's it's just really interesting. They put in a bunch of different games in there. It's it's just kind of fun. My son's a huge Minecraft fan, so we've been in there. And uh, he learned a few things about mining and other things in there. And uh, it's pretty cool. We have, a, we have six ASICs in the game now. And uh, I'm, I'm uh, setting up a, uh, if you go to play.setlantis.net, you can kind of see the world map there. And uh, I claimed some land that I call Bitcoin Design. And I'm working on a big um, Bitcoin Design uh, symbol there. Like out of out of Minecraft blocks, trying to build a big Bitcoin design symbol on top of a volcano there. So if you'd like to join, you know, come on in and join the uh, Minecraft Bitcoin design land there. Anyone play Minecraft? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that's actually where we're going to host the next uh, Bitcoin design community call, number forty-five. It's actually going to be in the Minecraft server. I'm sure we get a lot of people joining us on that one. <laughs> um, you know, it's it, it's fun though. They really said they really put in a lot of effort to kind of also create this in-game economy a bit. Uh, you know, some people mine resources, and there sometimes and someone else who, do, who wants to keep their, their ASICs running but doesn't want to go mining for emeralds and whatnot, they'll just spend, you know buy pay for Sats, pay someone else for their resources, and uh, they're it's it's really interesting. It's a it's a fun playful thing, and um, yeah. Very cool. I'm trying to support it a little bit. So I think it's it's uh, it's fun. And uh, yeah, so next one is uh, we met Bolt12.org. So as I mentioned earlier, this is one of those campaigns to promote Bolt12. Stephen, you're involved with that a little bit, right? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, uh, I've been doing some work for the Bolt 12 and the async payments uh, thing uh, late last year, and then I've been responding to some feedback on that recently. Um, so I'm hoping to get yeah back back involved in that project um, again soon. But I haven't like you know done a ton on it, you know, in the past week or so. Yeah, so is is the is the ask right now or the the goal to just so this <laughs> Bolt 12 dot org. Is uh, I don't think there's any styling there. It seems like it's straight out HTML without any CSS. Maybe just a little bit. Um, is it just to re like to visually restyle this, or are, is it is the idea to turn it into like a project website where you learn how to contribute and there's documentation and other things? Do you maybe know? Uh, no, I actually don't know. Though I know, uh, I mean, there there, there is kind of a. a you know, a discord floating around for people who are into, you know, want to participate in the, the, the bolt 12 kind of discussion. And there's some chatter about a, a redesign, but I don't, I don't think it's, uh, I, I, I might've missed something, but I don't think uh, the, that project is too far along yet, but I'm sure, I'm sure it will be. I mean, but you know, it's like the point is it's like, yeah, the Bolt 12 website, it, it's like, it's all right. It's got the Bolt 12 text on there. It's got some examples. Um, but I think, uh, you know, there's just, uh, there's, it, it could use some styling one, but this is just me saying my own opinion on it. And I'm not saying this is the direction the project's going or anything, but yeah, I could use some styling that would make it look nicer. But I think also more importantly, there's just uh, the, the Bolt 12 discussion has been very like kind of hidden um, for most people. Um, not hidden. It's like in public sites like Lightning Dev mailing list and, and all of that kind of stuff. But that, that's not always the, the most like accessible place for uh, everyone to have, you know, participate in these kinds of discussions. So. Uh, I think one one thing that could be good uh, with the Bolt 12 website would be like having some kind of news and recaps and things like that, like kind of, um, you know, visual explanations, like diagrams of like how it's supposed to work under the hood and, you know, uh, just, you know, steering people to where they can get involved in the conversation and, and, and all of that. But no, I don't have like a ton of uh, juicy details on, on the, a Bolt 12 website design at the moment. 
And um, is Paul 12 still kind of in a spot where the development, it's more about the development rather than the adoption of the technology? Well, it's a little bit of both. I mean, you know, the thing is, is I can actually probably pull up some recent messages on that. Like the, the thing about Bolt 12 is like a core, core lightning uh, was the, the earliest to ship it. I'm pretty sure. Um, but I think the, you know, so you got the spec, right? You got the actual Bolt 12 document and then you have the actual implementation of the technology. I think the spec has actually changed a little bit. Like the draft has been updated a good bit since Core Lightning uh, updated it. So yeah, I'm reading it here. Yeah, there's been spec changes the past year. So yeah, so Core Lightning I think is supposed to be uh, working on some updates for the spec. Uh, Eclair is working on it. LDK is working on it. L and D, not entirely sure if that's happening or not, but there's somebody working on, uh, like I think a plugin or something like that that's supposed to uh, is supposed to help provide some level of Bolt 12 support for L and D. So, yeah, it's there's it's it's there's spec work still. I'm sure they're still talking about the spec. It gets a little above my pay grade. But it's it's also a matter of actually getting it implemented and built into um, a lot of these solutions. So, and then once and then and then and then you know there's the whole matter of that once let's say CLN gets it shipped, Eclair gets it shipped, LDK gets it shipped, maybe LND has some kind of independent Bolt 12 daemon. You get all that stuff shipped, and then you get to the the kind of the UX you know part of it where it's like all right. Now we have a new payment format, you know, um, before we were using Bolt 11 invoices and now in URL pay, now we're adding Bolt 12 to the mix. And the whole, the whole you know, thing we went through uh, with BIP21, the Bitcoin QR website and all that, I imagine we'll probably have to go through something very similar to that for, you know, scanning Bolt 12 offers and, and being to parse those. Um, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be that all over again. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think there's some very intricate UX um, that requires fairly deep understanding of how things work with and without and with, with partial Bolt 12 support. I think it's going to be very intricate. But uh, even better than if, if we can put our heads together and come up with some type of best practices. So, so fewer people have to bang their head, head, heads against this problem. Um, cool, looking, looking forward to uh, looking at the rest of the newsletter here. We only have about five minutes left on this call. Um, we got something about, someone asked where, where you can get the latest lightning news. We have a few links in there and opportunities. Evan from Zeus is looking to help create NFC cards and other promotional material for Zeus using the existing branding. Someone wants to help out. eCurrency Hodler, aka Andrew. Um, they're starting a Bitcoin product community. So this is for product or project managers, um, which, you know, there's some overlap with, with Bitcoin design, but there's also, it's also a unique um, and uh, I don't know what you call that expertise, job, profession, skill set, or different types of skill sets. So they they put their heads together. They have a Discord, um, and they're in early stages right now. I think they have a call coming up tomorrow if someone is in a, in a project management role and would like to exchange with with fellow minded people. That's a good one. And uh, just click the link in in the newsletter to get there. I don't know. I, I don't have the Telegram, uh, the Discord link here. Um, and then Mike from Lightning Ventures was looking for help redesigning their website. I think that's just lightning.ventures. Might be wrong. Um, also, a few design jobs open on Stacker News, um, the job board. I know things are a little bit tricky these days uh, where, you know, with con economic situation and whatnot, uh, a bunch of people are looking for jobs. So um, also, you know, if, if you do, then, you know, look at some of these uh, opportunities and maybe also hop in the opportunities channel in Slack and share what you're working on, what you're doing. If you're looking for something, um, lots of opportunities. Um, I also, uh, one of the, a student also 
contacted me personally. I talked to him a little bit about <clears throat> how to apply to Bitcoin jobs. And uh, one of the biggest uh, messages that I gave him that he wasn't really so aware of was that to to really try to understand uh, the company that you're applying to and the job and the product and what they do. And, you know, not just kind of spam your resume or your portfolio and just you know, hope something helps out, but really try to <clears throat> create a personal application, take custom tailor it, um, learn about, you know, just be excited about what, what they're doing as well and get to know them a little bit. Uh, I think that's always um, a good thing uh, to do in these situations. And then I guess one, uh, two couple more things that are kind of exciting. So Penpot, the open source design tool that we've mentioned a bunch of times over the last few years is out of beta and officially released. They also have an announcement. So a couple nights ago, they had this un unboxing video on their official release day. They also have a talk at FOSTEM where they're presenting the whole application. They released auto layout. Um, it's basically like Figma, but open source. Their auto layout actually is a little bit more powerful in some ways than what Figma does. And you can also host your own server. Uh, you can self-host the whole design application yourself. Um, I was looking, I asked around if someone wants to host one for the design community. Uh, someone offered, uh, he said he might, he might have some uh, extra capacity on one of his servers. So maybe we'll get to experiment with that one. So definitely it's open source. It's amazing we have an open source design tool. I hope we can support them. So look at PenPod. And then also Damas is now uh, the Nostra application. Again, I think it's the sixth time here now Nostra is mentioned in this newsletter. They're all, it's also available in the App Store, um, which is nice. And that's, uh, that's it for this, uh, for this newsletter. And if you want to help out with the, uh, with the newsletter, maybe Mo, this is something that you could um, communicate. And we have Sadlantis and the Bitcoin company here. Uh, quick shout out, uh, just talked about you about 10 minutes ago. Awesome to have you on the call. If you wanted to talk about your project a little bit, you're more than welcome to. I'll just jump in very quickly about the newsletter, but um, I'm glad you mentioned Penpot as well because they're they're actually going to be the first talk now at FOSTEM. So that's the first talk at one o'clock. Um, so I was just checking my train times to make sure I'm on there at there on time because I'd really love to see them um, speaking about their their launch. But uh, yeah, with regards to the newsletter. Um, We've just been keeping things super simple. Um, you know, we we basically, um, Christoph has shared in the, um, uh, which is the channel, it sort of slips my mind. Let me open Spread it Spread the word. Spread the word channel. Yeah, there we go. In the Spread the Word channel, um, Christoph just basically shares a Google document. Um, so, you know, if you'd like to help out with the newsletter, it's totally open to everyone. Um, you know, if you have some news, you know, we we only kind of, look at what's going on within the community and a little bit outside the community, you know, projects we're involved in or conferences, but it's totally open for you to share your news, what's going on, um, the stuff we don't know about. We'd love to, to hear about it. So um, it's just a Google document, jump into the spread the word channel and jump in the Google document, just add in a bunch of stuff that you feel needs to be shared with the community and that's pretty much it. It's, it's, it's as easy as that. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for that, Mo. Uh, do you also want to, want to wrap it up for today? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you. Currently, you know, I'll, I'll be, I'll add some humor. I'm currently looking at the, the, the distance between the Brussels train station that I arrive at and the location at Fosdev. <laughs> <laughs> just to check, check my route. But um, this has been an, a, a really nice call. Um, I think they have the idea that Christoph had of, um, you know, um, kind of doing these calls and, and basing the, the content of the community calls on the newsletter was a really good idea because, um, you know, some people like to listen to audio stuff. Some people like to read. And I think this um, makes the newsletter more usable and more accessible for everyone because, you know, maybe you don't feel like reading. So, you know, then you can just jump on the call, listen to us rambling on and uh, and chime in wherever you feel like. So, yeah, thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, really appreciate your time. And, uh, yeah, if there's anything you would like to add, uh, Stephen or Christoph, um, that's it. I would just add that it was Stephen's idea to do this. I have this, I wrote this document with 
crazy amount of ideas of things we could do in this in these community calls like hosting speakers and panels and Stephen was just like no nah, you know let's keep it simple this will be <laughs> just reviewing the newsletter is plenty of material to to chat chat about so thanks Stephen and all right let's let's wrap it up here thank you all uh, for joining and we'll see you online